20 watts. That wasn't good. <laughs> Let's try that again. Hey guys, I'm Tom the Tech Chap, and in this video, I'm comparing the OnePlus 7 Pro with the Oppo Reno 10x Zoom. Reno, Reno, Reno? I think it's Reno. First things first, these are both fantastic phones. You really can't go wrong with either of them. And I think both companies, but particularly Oppo, are benefiting from all this recent Huawei controversy. As sad as it is to say, until we know more about the future of Huawei in terms of their own OS or whether there'll be a trade deal, it's almost impossible to recommend them now. So if you were thinking about buying the P30 Pro, perhaps for the 10 times zoom camera, then the Oppo Reno 10 times zoom could be a good alternative. But between the Oppo and the OnePlus, which is better? Well, honestly, the first thing that strikes me is just how similar they are. While the designs on the back are definitely unique, they're pretty much the same size, although the Oppo is just a shade thicker and heavier. They both have full edge-to-edge -edge screens with pop-out selfie cameras, although in slightly different styles. I can't help but see a tic-tac lid popping open on the Oppo. They share basically the same specs, including the Snapdragon 855. Both have triple camera setups, in-screen optical fingerprint readers, stereo speakers, although the OnePlus does sound better, similarly sized batteries, fast charging, and neither have an IP water resistance rating, wireless charging, or a headphone jack. So clearly they have a lot in common, although for the 8GB of RAM and 256GB storage model, the Oppo is £50 cheaper here in the UK at 649 But aside from the £50 price difference, which is the better phone? Well, let's start with the OnePlus 7 Pro. And while they both do have AMOLED screens, the OnePlus is the clear winner with a higher resolution Quad HD display, HDR10 Plus support, and most importantly, a smoother 90 Hz refresh rate, which for me is one of the best features of the phone. It just makes everything feel so much faster and more responsive. The 7 Pro also runs Oxygen OS software, and it's one of my favorite UIs. It's lightweight, fast, and has basically no bloatware, the Oppo is basically the polar opposite. It's running on their Color OS software and it's fine, but it's definitely not my favorite. And the animations feel long, so I definitely recommend going into the dev options and speeding them up. The OnePlus 7 Pro also comes with faster UFS 3 storage, plus you can get it with 12 gigabytes of RAM, which to be honest, no one should, that's just overkill. Uh, save you money, go for the eight gig version. But actually, more importantly, we do get faster charging, 30 watts versus 20 watts. What that means in reality is it takes 20 minutes for the OnePlus to go from zero to 50% and it takes 30 minutes for the Oppo. The lack of wireless charging on both though is a bit disappointing. One final thing to say about the OnePlus is that it does feel a lot nicer to hold. As the YouTube cliche goes, it feels good in the hand. That's largely down to these curved edges of the screen, which I know not everyone is a fan of. You may actually prefer the flat edges of the Oppo. Holding them both, the Oppo feels just a bit boxy and a little bit budget versus the more premium feeling OnePlus. They are both very slippery though, so I definitely recommend a case, which you actually do get bundled in the box with the phones. So that's the OnePlus. Now the Oppo kind of only really has one trick up its sleeve, and that's the camera. We get a five times optical zoom, a 10 times hybrid zoom, and a crazy 60 times digital zoom. Although bizarrely, when you tap the zoom icon, it goes two times, six times, and then 10 times. Yet it's only an optical zoom at five times. So unless you manually then pinch out to bring it back to five times, you're getting a hybrid photo that doesn't look as good. Despite that though, it is really cool being able to zoom in so far. And even at 10 times zoom, the level of detail and sharpness is very impressive. In contrast, the OnePlus maxes out at a three times optical zoom. And if we crop in to match the 10 times hybrid zoom on the Oppo, you can clearly see the difference in quality. Now let me put the camera specs up side by side, as at the same time they're both very similar, with wide, ultra wide, and zoom lenses. They're also slightly different in terms of megapixels and apertures. Oppo is clearly focusing on the periscope lens, whereas OnePlus has gone for a higher resolution ultra wide. So let me show you some photos side by side, and I want you to tell me which you prefer the look of and which you think is best in the comments below. Although to my eye, while they both do a decent job, particularly in good light, neither really break into Pixel, iPhone, or dare I even say Galaxy S10 Plus territory. Far too often I find photos I've taken that should be sharp and in focus are actually kind of blurry. I think the best word for it is inconsistent, even with the latest updates. They both have night modes, and you can see how the longer exposure brightens the image, but also tends to over sharpen it. Selfies look good on both, but I think the OnePlus takes the win. You get a crisper and more evenly exposed selfie. Sometimes the Oppo struggles with brighter areas and can be a little blurry. 
As much as I still do expect a bit more from OnePlus's rear cameras, the selfie cam is one of my favourites. They both shoot video at up to 4K, although only the OnePlus offers decent stabilisation at 4K. The Oppo becomes a bit too shaky when walking around. Quality is fine, but you have to drop it down to 1080p for smoother video. So I think in terms of camera quality, the OnePlus 7 Pro does come out on top, although if you really do want the zoom lens, then the Reno is the obvious choice. And if you do want to see more camera tests and also lots of behind the scenes shots, then make sure you follow me on Instagram at the tech chap. Moving on from the camera, and the Oppo does last a little bit longer. The slightly bigger 4065 versus 4000 mAh battery obviously doesn't make much difference, but I did find the Oppo lasted about an hour longer. By the end of a normal working day, I'd have about 30% of my battery left on the OnePlus and around 38% on the Oppo. It's not a massive difference, but clearly the higher resolution and higher refresh rate of the OnePlus does have an impact on the battery. Although to mitigate this, you do get the faster 30 watt charging. Both phones do support dual SIM cards, which is really helpful, although the second SIM on the Oppo doubles as a micro SD card slot. So if you want to expand that 256 gig storage even more, for whatever reason, you can. Oh, and also, if you're wondering what that little round lumpy thing on the back of the Oppo is, apparently it's there so when the phone is on a flat surface, the camera lenses are less likely to get scratched. It's quite a nice idea. So then, the big question, which one is the better phone? Which would I go for? I think it's a clear win for the OnePlus 7 Pro. Reasons you might want to go for the Oppo are if you prefer the design for some reason, although personally I think the OnePlus feels a bit more premium, but if you really want the best zoom camera and maybe you don't want to buy the P30 Pro now for whatever reason, then I think the Reno is a good option. And even though the Oppo is £50 cheaper, for me, I think I would pay that a little bit more and go for the 7 Pro. Although I have put links to both in the description if you do want to find out more. The OnePlus 7 Pro is my daily driver at the moment, however, I am very tempted to switch to either the Asus Zenfone 6, here's one I made earlier, and also maybe the Sony Xperia X1, which I've just got in for review, so stay tuned, make sure you do subscribe as I'll be reviewing those phones as well and giving you a bit of a roundup on what my favourite phone of 2019 so far is, so make sure you don't miss that. But what do you reckon? Would you go Oppo or OnePlus or none of the above? Let me know what you think in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching guys, make sure you do hit that like and subscribe button and ding that little notification bell so you don't miss out on my next video and I'll catch you next time right here on the Tech Chat.